All right, so now that I'm drunk and shit, let me be honest. So you can understand when you see people that seem a bit awkward or a little bit emotionally off or on or whatever, however you want to word it. Listen, I'm, I have a GD. I have so much sympathy to give to people that may have learning disabilities, grow up in poverty stricken environments where people are very unintelligent. And this can slow you down. This is the things that I stress about as a human being. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate life because a lot of people are dead. When I see graveyards, it's a, it's, it's a symbolism of death. And I really appreciate my life. And like like you heard the saying, it's a catch of 22. Either you lose or you lose. Sometimes shit just don't make sense and you just do it. Just like some people say, I'm like... People complain about me having body fat, and I'm sitting here talking about how it can be places where you can go where if you get stranded in the middle of nowhere, you're going to appreciate every bit of fat on your body. Because I'm one of those people that I was taught growing up by a bunch of people in my family that you need to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, drink a little bit of this, drink a little bit, smoke a little bit of that, smoke a little bit of that just in case you survive a crime involving these substances. So I think when people are um, taking into consideration of cases being solved, they realize that, hey, you know, I like I wrote a letter to like, when I moved to Cobb County, Cobb County, I survived crime in Cobb County too. But when I moved to the suburbs, I actually wrote like different judges, I wrote a letter about how I'm dealing with this whole ideology of rape culture, and I'm pretty much susceptible to getting raped by a bunch of people that think a certain way and think that there's something, and that's just where their mind is. And then for me, as being identified to the world, I am a female, but in reality, trying to think deeply, I am just a human being, just being from a broader perspective, all these motherfuckers in the world see me as a female. So that identity alone is hard. You know what I'm saying? Because most females that I know in my surroundings and my demographic are going to be a pessimist at some point. If you have had sex with a man or a man has had sex with you, you will become a pessimist. Either you're being loved or you're not being loved. Or if you are being loved, at some point you're going to be rejected because of some other woman right in a general sense so with all that being said all these different things i'm hearing different countries people talking about polygamy and shit all this shit don't make sense all right so i said poetry is one of those arenas one of those ideologies that try to justify shit that don't make sense that's why i like poetry that's why people think people with that write poetry usually is trying to figure out something that they can't figure out so they just take advantage of literature of literary texts and just try to some kind of way put words together in a creative manner to make some shit make sense. So with all that being said, I am a single black woman in essence, but in so and, and, and I want to be much more. You know what I'm saying? I am uh I think I think uh, I think a lot and I think there's nothing wrong with that because I've done so much in life as far as my brain is concerned and thinking to the point where, you know, when I die, I can't say that I ain't just did shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has made a contribution to this world, to this society in some type of way. And I just want to say, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate whoever, whatever existence, God, Allah, whoever, whomever is the reason why I'm here. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I appreciate this YouTube video. I appreciate YouTube because I can go on here and see people in Guatemala and see videos of people from different places in ghettos and feel at peace with myself because I'm like, just like, you know, it's a detox. It's like a reverse psychological detox. I actually appreciate, <clears throat> excuse me, certain intellectual avenues like reverse psychology. I appreciate that because... When you think of the ghetto, it, from my perspective, from my point of view, most people think of the dangers of the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? There are people that aren't raised in such places where there's a high, you know what I'm saying, uh, concentrated area of, of ignorant people committing crimes because 
they don't have a certain intellectual capacity to think outside of that. So with all that being said, you know what I'm saying? The 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 the, pers- the, the idea of the ghetto is something that I appreciate of being from the ghetto is something that I appreciate because I do consider myself to be from the ghetto. When I think of Windsor Street, 540 Windsor Street, when I think of um, Mechanicsville, Georgia, and I think of Atlanta, Georgia, you know what I'm saying? I think of ghetto You know what I'm saying? Then when you go all the way to Buckhead, don't get me wrong, land is land, but it's just it's a certain way that the ghetto look. You know what I'm saying? There are certain things that you can do to classify, to up to upgrade things to make it not seem so ghetto. Like, you go to Kennesaw, you go to Powder Springs, you're not going to feel the same as if being in the ghetto in uh, off, uh, Edgewood Avenue or being in the ghetto in Mechanicsville off Windsor Street. The shit feels very different. It's, it's, it's something... It's something... Crazy. It's kind of crazy because I I, I, I I always said like some people I'm born into a situation where I got family members that are big that are ancestral babies and shit like that. So me, I am an awkward person in because in reality I am somewhat normal, right? I'm the normal one, but I'm like, as I'm, my mom has four girls and superstitiously speaking, she says we're the sister she never had, meaning she grew up with boys and she probably got treated differently because of the whole concept of manhood. So she probably did somewhat to degree, some, to some degree, agree with the ideology of feminism because I don't know. Just, just because it is, a, it is an idea, idea. It is a concept, and I actually, you know what I'm saying, sympathize with my mom to a certain degree because after she had me, that that was a courage booster. You know what I'm saying? Once a woman have a baby, I'm not sure if she had an abortion before me or not. It's just certain stuff you just, you know, you don't want your kids to stress as much. I'm pretty sure. You know what I'm saying? As I got older and I'm just learning about reality, I'm realizing that. My stress comes from me caring about my mom. You know what I'm saying? It's like you kind of don't know which way to go because in the ghetto, you learn to be quiet about things that's done to you that might not necessarily be right. And you are you have to learn to survive. That's why most people from the ghetto make good police officers. And also, I think, um, you know, when people, those people that be holding people hostages and you can talk to them out of stuff, I think that, you know, being manipulative, you know what I'm saying? Being a manipulative personality is actually a good thing that you may be able to learn. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, that's, that's the point of being an intellect. You know what I'm saying? Because if you understand manipulation or you are a manipulative person, you can take that and turn that into something else. You can become one of those special unit people that talk and manipulate people mentally, whether in a good way or a bad way, and talk them out of doing some shit that they're going to regret or doing some shit to, to, to cause less harm to others or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? So without it being said, I got a bunch of retards ringing in my head. And the only reason why I view them as retarded is because I have the negative connotation on my mind that they are. And I'm smart. And that's the cons to being an intellect. I'm like, I got a cousin having sex with me and I can tell that he's related to me genetics wise. And I survived a lot growing up and I wanted these people to feel love. But in reality, to me, they were insecure. So in, in reality, they're pushing their insecurities onto me, and now I'm being viewed as an insecure woman. I'm being viewed as an inbred by certain, certain people, when in reality, I'm trying to show love to a bunch of people who don't feel like they're getting it. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of people that have cognitive dissonances, and so on and so forth. You know, <sighs> courage juice, that's what they call it, liquor. But in reality, that's... You know, being an analyst, you know, some people associate inbreds, people that have deformities in their genetics. That's what I'm saying. The, the constant learning shit is hard because I'm like, I can't look at somebody and just be like, man, something wrong with them. They face look afflicted. But you can tell. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to be honest with you, 
you know, I can understand if you view somebody as unattractive, that could ring in your, your head and it can agitate you. I have so much sympathy to give on it because I have people in my head, like my auntie, she's a product of an ancestral relationship. I can tell. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just, she looks weird. I'm just going to say that. She looked weird. You know, albino people. She got a son with her brother, her daddy. One of the two, I could tell. I'm like, ain't no, I know people genetics are similar, but you can tell. You know what I'm saying? That I, I was being viewed as an inbred, and my cousin was having sex with me based off the simple fact that he had experienced the orgasm at some, some point in his life. And then on top of that, they got this whole concept of naturalism trying to justify and be like, it's, it's natural for a man to sit there and have an orgasm in a woman. So now I'm being really jealous of the fact that men can sit here and be detoxed or whatever they try. I don't know if they will be an optimist. I don't know. A lot of shit about my life is confused. I am just from the South in North America. And I, I just want to let you know that some of these stigmas about being a Southerner in a North America is true. And I try to escape from all that by watching videos about people in Bolivia going to school on canoes and shit. And in reality, I can live that shit out too. You know what I'm saying? I had, I went to Kennesaw Mountain High School, shout out to Kennesaw. And I definitely was sitting there telling them people that, listen, I am pretty much coming from an environment where most people are trapped in the confines of a poverty-stricken mentality and they're taught to be quiet about things that need to be talked about so that we can stop having so many crazy people. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've seen on here there's a, a documentary about pr- people that are pedophiles and shit like that. I grew up around people like that. You know what I'm saying? My stepdad was a pedophile. You know what I'm saying? We have age limits that are placed and shit because people are experiencing orgasms against their own will. And once they do it, they either become sex addicts or they become scorned like me and they become out of control of themselves. You know what I'm saying? Sex is something that, you know, if I ever ended up in a relationship, that is not going to be the primary source of, that's not going to be the foundation of why I would like the next person. You know so when it comes to women, I'm like, I can't even value a woman for sex. I'm so damn overstimulated when it comes to sexual desire. It really don't even matter. I just like being around pretty women. You know what I'm saying? So, it's fucked up that, you know, I do believe in the concept of naturalism because in reality, I think the first person that gave me when I, I I was talking to a sexual identity by a woman that wanted her son to be a pimp or wanted her son to have a relationship with the girl living in the neighborhood. And it's embarrassing because in reality, that shit is not normal. Kids shouldn't be having sex. I'm a living witness. Sex has created a very hyper sensitive personality in me. And most people are responding with, well, you need to have more sex. And that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? And it's fucked up because, you know, me being a feminist, I guess I'm contributing to men feeling good about themselves as far as manhood is concerned. And then, you know, most men that I know when it comes to feminism, they always really want to um, oppose women and just be like, ah, oh, you can't tame us. I can't look at feminism and, and men opposing me in a positive aspect because I'm a sexual abuse victim to myself. OK, so. That's what happened. And I got men that really, you know, have lies with women and shit. It's a lot of polygamy out here. And that's what I don't understand because in reality, I have morality. I'm alone out here. Like, I am not one of those people that condone all this ghetto shit. Um, I got boyfriend number two, shit like that. All that shit don't make sense, but it's a part of life. You know, like one of my sons by Fox and Million, I would just listen to it. I was like, man, that shit. I really like that song because it's really true. He said, when is these niggas gonna learn? Gonna learn that ain't your pussy boy. Just your turn. Your turn. And it's true because in reality, I think that women are beautiful. I'm a lesbian, and I'm a living witness that, in reality, the reason I think the reason why I'm not taken seriously is because of my womanhood. And I feel like if I was a man, I would have ended up just being a player, which is fucked up because I feel as though, you know, 
since somebody created a sexual desire in me and then I'm rejected with men because of being an intellect, it's fucked up because most people in my life are very sexual and perverse. And in reality, once they snap their mind out of that, they will be appreciated and valued more. But some people, it just it's just depends on where your mind go. I don't know. Like I say I got cousins I grew up around that had sex with me and shit, and people just mind gone. And that's why I feel sorry for you know you can you can try your best to feel sorry for retarded people, autistic kids and shit. But if you know what I'm saying if they leave here, whatever whatever you know a lot of them from i went to an outdoor therapeutic program and they say i want to be treated normal and shit like that i'm like i never viewed them as abnormal or different from me just because i'm not clinically diagnosed with this shit i'm like i don't see no difference between me and you and at the end of the day shit if you're gonna die thoroughbred you're gonna die thoroughbred i'm like i've come from an environment where people are catching bodies and thinking it's normal i don't personally think it's normal I do feel guilty if I do some shit like that, but I'm, I, I was taught, I taught myself to defend myself. You know what I'm saying? I can't just let straight people walk all over me like that. I'm sorry. I cannot sit here and keep getting raped by a bunch of heterosexual men that need to get their dicks off and then say that I won't be, re, that I won't retaliate, but <sighs> motherfuckers better preach my, appreciate my lesbian because some of these women are cute to me and they are the reason why I'm not retaliating as much as I need to. So y'all got to understand, right? I'm going to be mature because I like some of these bitches out here, like on a serious level, on a like, yeah, she cute as hell. I wish I could just hang with her and watch TV. So... I think some of these niggas out here, these street dudes and shit I grew up around, most niggas I grew up around, they street niggas, right? They grow up and they hit lists and shit and they done got shot at, shot and all that shit. And it's just normal behavior for them. And at the end of the day, they want to be rich. I'm like, we never grew up really poor in the neighborhood, but like I was in the outdoor therapeutic program and I told, I met a dude who said he was a tree and his name was Third Good Rothschild. I said, I got $20 in my pocket right now. And I was like, I got money but I don't have wealth, right? Everybody want to be rich. That's what. That's the mental capacity that you're dealing with in the ghetto when niggas are sitting there getting money and getting money and getting money and getting money, and then they might tell somebody to buy some weed from them. You might rob somebody you sell weed to because you're trying to get them to respect you and value you. Nah, you're going to do what I say. This is what narcissism is. Because I met a dude, and I was like, you are a predictable personality, Name was Rob. I was like, I bought a five dollar sack of weed off of him, and I said, in the future, you're gonna be one of them niggas that's getting a lot of hoes that's loyal to you. And in reality, you was I could tell by the way you act, you was taught not to really give a fuck. So it just depends on where you come from, man. At the end of the day, like. You know, this is a dude, a random dude that I compare myself to based off the fact that I could tell, you know, that he was, you know, somewhat of a, a badass, but he got people in his life that try to keep it, his brain straight. They try to keep him a stern person, but really just, you know, it's all over the place. Like, yo, God, he supposedly said yo, God, it was his uncle and shit. And you know what I'm saying? Some people say, well, your guy used to rob houses and shit like that. I'm like, what are they looking for? Love. They ain't looking for love. Because they street niggas. They ain't, street. they ain't looking for love. They looking for wealth. So I'm like, some of you women in y'all community got the same mentality. I'm like, I'm a lesbian. I ain't got no kids and that. I done took dick, but I don't like men. And what I'm saying is, I didn't do it willingly. You know what I'm saying? The men in my, my life had a very, you know what I'm saying, preying on women mindset. I, I just labeled it a predatory mindset. You praying on women downfall, that's just how you get down. You ain't getting women because you can actually have a conversation with them and be respectful. I'm saying the hood is a, it's a jungle. It's like a jungle mentality. Like, motherfuckers living in the middle of the jungle, they survive with the fittest. Either you're going to take this dick and get tamed, or you're going to run away. That's how it works naturally. Like, when a, uh, all the men in my life is supposed to be protecting me, but I'm feeling a sense of insecurity and a feeling a sense of uh fear around them 
So that's where my inferiority, inferiority complex come from. So in, es, in, in essence, like I said, a lot of people I grew up around, you know, for some reason in my life, I haven't done much but analyze Geechee people, right? For some reason, I didn't turn out to be a Geechee person, a Geechee soul, a person that speaks Geechee. This is this is this these these people are a special kind of people to me. Obviously, they are different from me in my head because I'm sitting here analyzing them, and I really view them as a detox because they 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 sound a bit different from me and they rub off on people. And, and I'm like, I find myself I, I I listen to a lot of Gucci music and I really appreciate these people to a certain degree because when I'm unhappy, sometimes I can listen to a song from Quartz and Million and just be like, I feel happy listening to that song. So, yeah, there are things, you know, somebody told me I showed signs of schizophrenia and that's why I regret my womanhood because when you're a man, most witches can think like men. When you're an actual man, you have a penis. When you get horny, Boop, yo, yo, your penis gets hard. There's a mythical pat. There's a mythical passage. A mental man is what a butch is, and it's like you can't really naturally have that penis that you want, and it's fucked up because it can cause a lot of stress on your body. Like you know, in the essence, you know, it's just fucked up. Cause I'm like I value a lot of lifestyles because I'm from the hood. You know what I'm saying? The pimp lifestyle and all that shit. And I can tell that I like women. Like, shout out to Pimp Snooky. He got, I was. I, I just posted a video that Want to Be a Baller by Lil Troy. I'm like, that video got 98 million views. I don't know if he alive. I don't know who he was. But that song meant the world to everybody in the ghetto. For so everybody from my ghetto. And I really value that song. And I really appreciate them 98 million views that they have. Because in essence, when we leave this earth, that song have so much pain in it. I have, I have some type of, like when it come to Creole men, they, they made a special, they got a certain type of essence. And it's like, it's crazy because I really value it and I view their essence as a detox. And I really have this inferiority complex to the Creole male. And I really actually enjoy it. Like, I was taught to have a strong mind. Ain't nobody never run game on me. Shout out to Dez, all these people. I'm like, man, I done sit here and wrote so many songs with so many Geechee niggas. And I'm like, you know, just to be to be honest with you, being in being that I'm a woman, I think um, there are women that will respect lesbianism if you really show like they say, bitches, most bitches are like muscle women that work out all the time and shit. And I'm like, if I work out and cut my breasts off, I will be valued more for my lesbianism. But in essence, you know, I grew up around a lot of people and they was instilling a lot of different things in me. They have different personalities and shit. And at the end of the day, like I say, like I got family in Mississippi. Some of these people are related. They think it's they think it's normal to have sister relationships. No, nah, let's talk real shit. Sexuality. Once you have that orgasm, you need to work out and try to stop thinking about sex. Cause that's my thing. I'm like, it's hard for me to stop thinking about all these inbred looking retarded people and I'm like I don't have an issue with you besides the fact that I'm not receptive of you because of this negative connotation on my head and I'm like somebody might view me as retarded because there are people that come from different places and they ain't like motherfucker complain about me being fat my mom used to complain about me being fat gaining weight and she's spending more money on clothes because of it I'm like well Cause I'm one of them people. Like I'm, I'm drinking. I just relapse, and I'm like, the reason why I say I relapse is because I don't view it as something that's pure. But at the same time, I do. Because anything can be good and bad for you. And at the end of the day, you know, there are certain people, presidents. 
that I can't stop thinking about. Mental focus, what you're working on, that's the point of being the intellect. When you're an intellect, you learn more. Your, I, I appreciate the Rastafarian lifestyle. I think, you know, natural hair and shit, once it's grow, when my hair grow long, it's, it's a representation of you. You can tell when somebody pulling on their hair a lot. I do that. Once it grow long, it'll show you how much discipline that I'm forming. It's up to me to get up in the morning and say, I'm going to go outside and jog. You know what I'm saying? My inferiority complex to the male physique is something that's stopping me from caring about. I work out all the time. I ride by bike, but I don't work out. I want to go out every day and jog two hours, and that's not hard to do. But my inferiority complex to men is the reason why I don't do it, because I'm like, I'll just be a butch if I build muscle. You know what I'm saying? I'm like sitting here comparing myself to other people's fate. And it's really fucked up. You know, because like they say, your attitude is a reflection of your altitude. I'm a pessimist because of men having sex with me. And pretty much, you know, I need upliftment. I'm not the only person that needs upliftment. I pay attention to everything. I, I watch videos of so-called homeless people sitting at the bus stop in Arizona and shit like that. And I'm like, man, shit means the world. I, I fuck with this YouTube shit, man, because everybody means something. I don't care who you is. I grew up, I got pedophilic, pedophilic people, motherfuckers in tune, you know, getting introduced to sex the wrong way. It's all stupid, man. You know, watching videos about the Whitakers, the Embrace, all that shit look crazy. I'm like, is that how people really view me? No. Motherfuckers would be like, well, you know, like I'm a neat freak. I, I grew up around, my mom had two babies by a dude, and I can tell by the way they act. Like, I'm, I'm a bit of a neat freak. And I say a bit of a neat freak because I'm not as neat as I want to be because I stress about shit not being organized in a certain way and i'm not saying that i'm the neatest person or the cleanest person in the world but i got a little sisters and i feel like they deserve submission she got a high school diploma i feel like that's the point when you get your education you can pay somebody to clean for you you know what i'm saying period so at the end of the day everybody think differently man you know i see a lot of people come to atlanta and they appreciate the city and it's detoxing, but I'm like, man, every hood, everybody needs a break. When you really, is a contribution, when you contribute to the horrifying things that happen in the hood or you're a victim of it, you need to move. You know what I'm saying? It's going to have a PTSD. I say, I, I want to make sure that my little sisters can move. I, if I if I hit a lick or do anything like that, it's going to be for them because they deserve it. They don't deserve it because they don't deserve to be going through shit just like I didn't deserve it. I grew up with people... You know, I know, like, I had a cousin named CJ. You know what I'm saying? I grew up being confused about a lot of shit. His mom name was Shell. He used to go in his house, and she would make him have sex with me. And to do what? Because she thought I was being submissive to him because of an orgasm. So I'm like, you telling me that I'm being viewed as a submissive because of a man having sex with me. But in reality... Um, from an educational standpoint, that may be the point. That may be that may be uh, that may be true, and that will that is a hard pill to swallow. That a motherfucker can think that you being submissive to them because of an orgasm, or whatever the case is, because of the whole paradigm of heterosexuality. So at the end of the day, all the men are getting the upper hand on me. And it's fucked up because I'm like, these niggas is sitting here trying to protect me and hurt me at the same time. And that's what she was sitting there telling me. I'm going to teach you betrayal. I'm like, oh, if you if I go anywhere in the world, there are going to be men that are going to want to pimp you simply because this is an ideology. This is the way they feel. This is, uh, this is the, a narcissistic effect of slavery and just, just, just some people that just want to control you. When these niggas gonna learn that ain't your pussy boy, it's just your turn. 
and that's what I gotta do as a lesbian. I actually value women in the same aspect that most men do, and that's what you gotta realize that some of these women are very beautiful and they out here giving love to different people. You know, I said I never viewed the women in, as thinking differently from the men that I grew up around. You know, what I'm saying it just depends on who you realize. I mean, you can meet men that really are into manhood and really feel like it's a difference between a man and woman. Them not the type of men. You know what I'm saying? That you want to goddamn be around when you scorn and shit. You want to be around some men that's cool and shit and laid back. But like I say, everybody got a stigma on there. I'm black, so I know what my stigma is. I'm like, it's just the constant learning. You know, life is a gamble. You know what I'm saying? I can sit here and say, I don't believe that eating grease is right. When I eat grease, I get mad, I go out and I beg for money, and it's not because, you know, it's either because I really I, I really do try to eat right, but I'm like, what about those people that own them restaurants? How do you think they feel? Everybody, the way my, I'm in a democracy, right? The way that our government is set up is people to have a successful business at the end. Once you learn all this bullshit, I'm not going to say bullshit, once you get to learning things. Everybody haven't achieved that. So with all that being said, there are people that think that since a man had sex with me, I was supposed to just be with a man because of the orgasm. And I find it very insulting. You know, but I say I like I'm a stigma, I'm a black woman, and I've been around people. I view most time I view people that are mixed. That are, that are outside of my ethnic background, outside of being black, as, as a detox. I really do. And, you know, that's just how it works, you know. For some reason, I feel inferior to all these mixed looking people, all these light skinned niggas and fucking Asian mixed with black and Japanese and Chicano and all that shit. Oh no, man. Y'all pray for us, man. Shout out to Pill Snooky. I be watching that documentary every day. They look like they having the time of their life, but it's stuff like that. It's, it's, it's detoxing because at the end of the day, everybody, everything, everybody just be living life every day. On some real shit, man. Appreciate it. When I be watching these videos and see how many views they got, I'm like, motherfucker need to appreciate the small things. I don't care how you look at it. When I seen that 98 million views on that little Troy want to be a baller song, I'm like, that nigga really want to be a baller. And I know for a fact that even if he alive, or still, or he ain't alive, I'm like, motherfuckers really want to reach that level of success, really a value just living in the ghetto just like i'm living in an apartment right now i'm just chilling kicking it with bras i got a certain mentality this is what i was taught you gotta appreciate it i appreciate pimp culture because it's a part of our reality it's a part of where i come from a lot of women that i grew up around that's that's what we grow up around it's very it's a lifestyle that's value in the ghetto and at the end of the day that's why I appreciate feminism too, because women are appreciating themselves for being women. Because if it weren't for women, you couldn't be no pimp. You know what I'm saying? If it weren't for women, you couldn't be no niggas rapping, making fire ass raps about having sex with pretty women and shit. So, you know, I don't know, man. Mental focus is what we need. I know I'm drunk and I probably ain't making no sense, but the sis just got back and I just want to say that they are my detox. That's why I was trying to tell her that. I'm like, you sitting there molesting your children, they are detox because they're pure. But at the end of the day, you done sat down and violated them and created an inferiority complex in them. 
but perhaps they're not scared. You know what I'm saying? Somebody told me, tried to tell me it was a ritual overseas, just from an intellectual perspective. You know what I'm saying? There's such thing as, you know, this is a sacred thing, and if you're being lustful, then you're not really viewing it in that aspect. So, I don't know, man. It's just so much shit that I've been through in my life, man. I, like I said, my mind ain't that deep. I'm just a child from the ghetto like everybody else. I don't know if Lil Snoop dead or not, but I love that boy with all my heart and soul because at the end of the day, if he is dead, he was just a child from the ghetto just like me. And, you know, I appreciate this lifestyle. Like I said, niggas be hating on niggas. Niggas can't do it like everybody can't do it like everybody can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I knew him, you know what I'm saying, not that personally, but I knew him. You know what I'm saying? I said, and chick, and chick, kicked it with him and everything. So, at the end of the day, it just is what it is, man.